Hello everyone and welcome back to Nate the Hoof Guy. Lately I've been getting a lot of questions about why do wild animals not need to have their feet trimmed and why don't they have foot problems? So today we're going to dig into that question and the primary reason is because they go through a process referred to as natural shedding. Domesticated cows don't necessarily go through that. Notice this first foot, this is from a freestall cow, and notice how this foot is overgrown, but it's completely consistent all the way across. It's, it's the same thickness, uh, but it's got a lot of growth to it. The reason this foot does not shed is because it stays uh, wet a lot of the time and that hoof stays hydrated. Therefore, it's not allowed to naturally shed off. The shedding process happens when that foot uh, dries out and rehydrates and dries out and rehydrates and it begins to break away and that excess horn will then fall away from the foot. Because this foot stays hydrated all the time, that doesn't happen. This is also a freestall cow, but with a little bit drier conditions. You can see here that there's portions of this foot that have naturally begun to shed away. It's not complete, so this can cause some imbalances, which is why we need to trim this type of foot. This foot will not completely uh, shed naturally on its own, hence why we have to intervene. In doing that, we can create a natural foot angle again, good balance, and, and make her more comfortable. Beyond that, what we're gonna go to is referred to uh, as a tie stall cow or a pastured cow that's been in during the winter. In that case, what we're gonna have is a foot that very much like that first case we looked at is going to be complete um, growth all the way across, very consistent. You can see here, heel depth so is thicker, but it's consistent all the way across. The reason this is is for the exact opposite reason as those freestall cows. These feet stay completely dry all the time being indoors during the winter. So when that happens, this foot isn't allowed to hydrate and dry out, hydrate and dry out and release that horn. So it stays on there. Uh, it's hard horn, but it stays in place. In the spring, when these cows go outside more, once the pasture is lush and they can get outside, then what's gonna happen is that natural shedding is gonna actually begin to take place and this foot's gonna change. Here's a foot going through the initial stages of natural shedding. You can see we've got some loose hoof along the axial wall on the inside. We're gonna remove that loose stuff there. We've also got some loose stuff along the heel area. And we've got, you notice the typical, what would be the typical sole ulcer site has actually shed away completely at this point. That's the first area of the foot that will shed away. And that's because it's got a lot of uh, looser connection in there and it's uh so that area is the first to fall away these outside wall and uh toward the toe that comes later on which you'll see as we move along with these trims as we look at this next foot we can see this foot is even further along the process Notice the sole area of this foot is almost completely shed away now. What we have left is some heel horn that's a little bit higher, and we've got this outside wall elevation that's higher. So we're gonna remove that and bring that down a little bit around the toes, but you can see how this foot is moving along that progression. You notice that split along the left claw toward the tip of the toe there? That's the next section that would be coming off of this particular foot. This next foot, once again, further down the process. Notice now there's not much left of wall horn at all. Most of that has shed away. What we have left is a little bit around the tip of the toe, a little bit that's starting to loosen up along that wall. But for the most part, this foot is getting real close to being completely trimmed on its own. The reason the wall horn takes longer to shed away is because it's much more of a structural entity in the foot. It's got a lot of tubules in it, it's a lot harder, it's made to withstand um, pressures a lot better, therefore it's just gonna take a lot longer to shed away. The reason the sole doesn't shed beyond a certain point is because of natural hydration. 
here you can see a foot that is almost completely trimmed on her own, completely shed away. Just a little bit toward the toe to take away, and this foot is spot on. Like I said, the reason that this the sole doesn't shed beyond this is from the natural hydration inside the foot. The corium keeps that uh, a normal sole depth of horn hydrated. Once it gets beyond that range, be, as it moves out, it begins to dry out, and that's when it begins to, to move away. Now here is a foot that ha I have not touched yet. This cow has spent her entire time outdoors. She's been out there for months now, and you can see the complete process has happened. This foot needs virtually no trimming whatsoever, and notice the shape of the sole. If you wonder why I trim the way I do, this is the exact reason why, and it is to match exactly how a natural foot is supposed to be. You can see that here. It's got uh, consistent sole depth all the way across. We've got good heel depth on this cow. There's not a lot of um, anything really to remove. Now the reason we trim these cows is to prevent this problem. Even though they naturally shed, sometimes if, they, if it's too long they can break off in uh, bad spots a little too far up. And you can see this one here is about three-eighths of an inch too far up the foot. And that, luckily in this case, it did not cause lameness, but that can break off and actually expose corium and be like cutting your fingernail really short, similar to that, except they have to walk on this. So the reason we trim them is to prevent that from happening. Even with uh, cows that natu do naturally shed, it can save a little bit of lameness in doing that, and it's worth it. Here you can see how that tip has broken off, and it's it's much, no, I wouldn't say much, but it's, it's beyond where we want to go is not caused, luckily not caused this particular cow lameness, but it can, so that's why we do that. When it comes to the different lesions cows can get, like ulcers and white lines and things like that, a lot of that has to do with the angles of the foot, but it also has to do with their walking surface. Dairy cows spend a lot of time on concrete, and when that happens, you're going to have a lot of more stress on the inner parts of the foot. Concrete is unforgiving versus out in the natural environment. We have softer ground, things like that. Another thing to consider is that a lot of these uh, lesions that these cows get, we treat as humans, and therefore those traits can sometimes be passed on to their offspring. Where in the wild, those bad traits, a cow that were to get lame, she would succumb to predators and likely wouldn't pass on her genetics. But as stewards of these animals, it is our responsibility to care for these animals, to treat these things, and to get them back to full health. So anyway, hopefully that gives you an idea of why wild animals don't need to have their hooves trimmed, and hopefully that'll answer that question for all of you in the future. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you all on the next one.